Well, gold star. Uh, since the last video, I've been working here and we stripped the frame right down. Now, this actually, we wanted to make sure everything's correct on here. This is a 1959 BSA Gold Star. For this, this model, this age, had the stamping on the front of the frame. We normally see the serial number on the side fillet piece, the strength from on the side here, it's on the front. Also, it was quite interesting, we got the battery tray here, but below we have a platform. And this is for competition use. You would take the battery off, you wouldn't have a, um, a, a dynamo, you would have a central mounted oil tank, and that's what that's for. So in 59, that was fitted to the standard. So it, this is gonna be a nice bike. So we stripped it down because I want to make sure everything was genuine. Uh, the frame, it's not worth doing all this work on the engine and gearbox and tinware if we don't tidy the frame up. It does want blasting and painting. As you can see, there's a lot of corrosion around the main stand. One of these legs is slightly out of line. Um, it's where a bike gets kick-started on the stand. There's a lot of pressure on the stand. So we make sure these legs, we tweak that back around. Uh, things we got here, we got the swing arm out, the spindle through the middle, these do get a little bit corroded, drifted that out. That wants a good clean up. The uh, adjusters, this one is a bit, you can see here, the thread's gone a bit, it's been wound in a little bit. It's not straight. So when that comes up against the uh, spindle, it's not sitting correctly. So we sort that out. Um, but it will be okay. The shocks, we we'll replace these shocks. We we'll use the same shocks as we put on Ian's bike. They are a good reproduction, uh, affordable shock. At the front here, I've got, what have I got here to show you? That is the uh, cover over the front mounts of the engine. As you can see where we are with this. This is why we need to paint this properly. It's quite scabby. But it will all clean up, you know, the metal's okay. Here we got the um, front fork shrouds. These are what I mentioned to you about. This spider underneath there of rust and it's lifting the paint, so it'll be blasted and painted. We're gonna do away with, how can I explain it? We do away with the setup it's got now where you have the bracket assembly for the headlight. We can have shrouds at the top here. I've taken this all off because in the vice here, I'll just come to this very quickly, uh, we got one of the fork legs. Um, the staunchions aren't very good. Peter did mention to me that one was leaking badly and they aren't very good at all. Now, something that's quite funny here, these staunchions, right, when we look, I'm gonna get Alex to come over here again now, when we look at um, an RGS or a Gold Star in Clubman trim, we have the clip-ons and you see the top part of the staunchion here is exposed. Well, on Peter's bike, we, we could see a, a bit of shininess, but it wasn't the fork staunchion. Someone had put a, uh, a, literally a sleeve over the top. We go back to Peter's, um, Staunchion, and we can see on here. I'll show you on this one. Someone's wrapped gaffer tape around here. They put these sleeves over the top. So where that is exposed at the top, you think the fork is in good condition. These fork legs are very badly pitted. Do you remember we was doing a few weeks ago? We was doing Thomas's A10 Golden Flash. Well, you can see here. And if I can't get, at the moment, these um, seal holders undone easily. We're gonna to have to have new ones because I've put a strap wrench on there, they won't come undone. So it's gonna be a little bit more work to get those apart. So we've put new staunchions and new bushes. These are relatively cheap, really. Well, I think we paid 120 pounds for a set of staunchions, which is pretty good, really, good value. So new bushes, new staunchions. Sorry to take me away from where I was. Um, we got the, the correct battery box here, which is the curved sided box. As you can see, this is quite rusty. 
So, you know, it's only got, you've got to do it properly. And here you can see all this spidering underneath here, the rust is running. So it'd be blasted and painted. We need a replacement oil tank because the tank, I think we mentioned this in the last video, is a flat sided tank. It's not the correct tank. And you've got to be careful here because it had a tank on here before. This has been a replacement uh, because sometimes people have tanks blasted and there's always that risk of getting sand or whatever they're using inside the oil tank. And then you can imagine what happens. The engine is run, you've got that contamination in the tank. Any of the bits of grit or whatever can find their way into the oil line, go through the system, get into the pump, get into the engine. So that you are so careful with any blasting around oil tanks. It's not really advisable unless you really, really blank things off properly. And then you still want to give it a really good thorough flush out. So we are after for this job, another oil tank. Because obviously we don't want an odd tank on here. It's not right for the bike. Um, so we need to get all that painted. Uh, the QD, rear wheel, the sprocket's fine, the back plate, the chrome wants replacing, the arm itself, this one's been chromed, they are sometimes black, so we could possibly, depends what we find, because we need chroming done, we might have to have that re-chromed, or we blast it and paint it, but we've got shoes here that probably, we might even send these off and get these redone through video services, because you know, the job we're doing now, we might as well do it. I think we only are paying, I think they're very good, like about 25, 22, 25 pounds for those to be sent off and redone. So basically, this is what I was doing yesterday, stripping this down. Behind me here, I've got some of the other parts here, very quickly show you. We've got the headlight, which is, is again, you can see the rust so we strip this out, we send this off and have this painted. We're not having um, clip-ons back on this bike. We're gonna have this straight A10 bars, but the rear light assembly, this you can see is well gone. So it'll be painted and the transfers will be put on and lacquered over the top. Uh, next box, very quickly, um, showing you about the oil tank. We're doing away with the GP carb on this job. I think I showed you in the last video, um, the slide on this is quite badly worn, but we want this bike to be a bike that's easy to ride, so we're gonna use the concentric carburetor, same as on Ian's bike we just done. So we've got a bike that will start easily, good mag, and it'll tick over. Been more, a bit of a more easy bike to live with. This is a remote fuel chamber, I've shown you before. We've put some new oil pipes on here as well. And the box underneath, we've got primary chain case, the horn, we'll blast this and get this painted, get that working. And um, in there, we've got the NEB, the, sorry, we've got the, got the clutch, the, uh, what the name of it, the Bob Newby clutch. Something I was going to make sure that we do cover, just pick this up very quickly. We showed you in the last video where normally a Triumph clutch has the adapter onto the main shaft and this is the sliding plate. Because this goes directly onto the main shaft, we're gonna make up a, a, a top hat um, sleeve that will come up close to that main shaft because this is a big open hole at the back here. And if you was riding in the wet or whatever, you get a lot of contamination. You don't wanna get that in the back of here. We have got belt dust in here which I think is only you know, a normal thing. It does run dry, but the tension was quite, it's quite taut that belt, and I think maybe it's a bit too taut. We're gonna put a new belt on anyway. We will make sure that alignment's correct. I don't think there's an issue there, but this gap, I am worried about that. And I think anyone that's done that conversion, you should think maybe about doing something like we're gonna do on sealing that up a bit more. So just put that back in there. This box here, we've got speedo and rev counter. These clocks, 
well, hopefully they work okay. We can just spin those on a cable to first make sure they're okay. A little bit of tidying up. We can paint a few bits here. You know, it's not a problem doing those few bits. The wiring loom. Now this is the harness that come out of it, or part of it. So we're putting a new loom in. This is not a good one. We'll have a wrapped, a proper cloth one against that. All the cables I've taken off are in here. We replaced the cables. Um, one interesting thing, we've got a voltage regulator box here, but what is inside is one of the old, um, uh, I remember the company name now, it's a, it's a rectifier replacement unit that uh, we don't use anymore. It's just been put inside this box. KTEC unit from probably back in the uh, 80s which were fine at the time, but we're gonna go back to the proper box with the coils, with the contact points, and I can get those redone. The battery, we'll replace the battery. Now, this is unusual, I've never seen one of these before. This is a dummy battery. So we have a small six volt battery in here. Now on the top, that looks like a proper battery. And it has the contacts going through here you see the wires and they pick up on the battery on the inside. I've never seen that before. So yeah, it's yeah, something that's new to me. So yeah, that's basically what's in the box there. So there's quite a bit of work to do, but it's, to do it properly is what we're gonna do. Um, we might as well look at the gearbox first. Okay, we, we spoke about the gearbox in the last video and it's stripped out. Um, I hadn't taken out the select cam plate. Now this is the thing inside, I will show you in a moment, where the dogs are running around. So what you have in here, you have your dogs are run around. You see here you have this, this cutaway. As the selector is moving, these dogs move in the gearbox and they shift the gears we showed in the window of the gearbox casing. The reason I'm just showing you this now is people often wonder what is the difference between a standard gearbox and an RR2 gearbox. We know the stamping, we know when we look at a gearbox that's getting around the right way, uh, on the right bit first. On the inner cover, we have a stamping here, RRT2, okay, but that only tells us that it's got these needle bearings. But if possibly could be stamped up and not be correct. But the biggest difference is in the casing itself. Now on the RRT2 gearbox, we have the plunger adjuster for the cam plate. Now that's something I was just gonna show you quickly. This is what I was showing you the other day, is this is a set to cam plate in here. Well this detent here, I'll take it out because it's easier to show you. This position here is the neutral position. Now, one way it go to first gear, and then it goes neutral into second, into third, into fourth, okay? Building the box up, it's most important that you build the box up in the neutral position. Now, you have this plunger sitting in the gearbox here. Okay, and it's adjustable so you can tension up that spring by altering the length of this the holder inside. But the RR2T gearbox has opposite a plug. Now it is possible to reverse that. You can put this in this side, which would change your gear position from being instead of one up to being one down. So it's the only gearbox that does that with the plug opposite the uh, plunger adjuster. Now I've got here a standard gearbox, and you'll see we've got the plunger adjuster, but opposite, it doesn't have anything at all. It's only designed to work in one way, one direction. Now, people have asked, can you put a standard um, selector into an RRT2 gearbox? Yes, you can. Because on our project bike, we will talk about this a little bit more later on, We've got our gearbox here, which I've built up. Now we'll talk about this more later. 
Normally we have the gear lever in a reverse position and in the reverse position we always have one up and that's correct gearing for a BSA. Now we're wanting to run our gears uh, standard but I'm using the RRT2, RRT2 gearbox. So to run those forward I still want to work in the upright position so I've had to change the plunger from the top position to the bottom position and that makes our gears work the same way as standard. But that is a close ratio gearbox with a standard cam plate in there to reverse it and to get it back to the correct position for a BSA. It's just something that, uh, you know, we could have run it one down the first because like I say it would have originally been run the other way but we wanted to make it still correct position. So that's got a standard cam plate in an RRT2 gearbox just moving the plunger from literally from the top to the bottom. So just something that I thought maybe you might be interested in. Right, going back to our gearbox, so we've washed all the components out. Mentioned about the, um, the main shaft and about the wear, and that's something we've got to sort out whether we get this uh, um, metal sprayed and ground to size or whether we get a replacement shaft. The reason that one more likely will suffer, because in the gearbox that's higher, and if the level oil drops and that's running dry, that can be a problem with lubrication. Because the lay shaft runs low in the gearbox and hopefully that will always have oil at that level. But because they do lose a bit of oil, these boxes out the main seal, we mentioned that. Um, so really I think the gearbox is pretty good. I've looked at all the gears, cleaned it all up, and as I said to you before, BSA gears, I, they are so well built. You know, they're, sorry, BSA bikes, they're, so, they're built like a gun as the advert was always intended. But the, the gear size is very heavy duty. If you look at a Triumph gearbox, the gears are much lighter weight and um, there's no comparison. And this is more agricultural. They are very strong, good box. We know our selector dogs are good and our, our selector her paw assembly is good. Um, there isn't too much wear at all. The biggest thing to replace is the seal. And this is where they leak from, this lip seal here. And I've joked before, when I put the new seal in, I usually um, put a little bit of silicone underneath the seal, just a, a, a smidgen, then put the um, seal in, then I put the clip back in. But it's all in good order, really. You know, we've got some bushes that we're going to replace, and we showed you the other day on the kickstart um, uh, bush here. And, but it's all in fairly good order. So that's not really too much of an issue, really. Uh, what else are we going to move on to, really, on this and show you? We ought to really come on to the engine now. All this has been through the um, uh, uh, chemical cleaner, our parts washer. Um, I'm not a great favourite of um, things being aqua blasted. Well, it depends what they're using in the way of blast material. I think on this, because really when you're blasting, you've got to strip everything out and there's always that worry of contamination. But what we usually do here, we do the pre-wash is really just to get things clean so we can have a visual inspection. We've got to take all the gasket material off now. We've got to take the springs out of here. We haven't done the guides yet, but I just cleaned up this barrel to what it was the other day. You can see now the damage we found when we looked at this, we could see the, where the fins have been cracked. And I had spoken to the customer about this. He was aware that it had been repaired. Um, it's okay. It's not the best repair in the world, but it's not an easy job to put the fins back on. The head looks in fairly good order. Um, plug thread, there's always something to check out, and obviously valve guides. And we looked at the, um, the top of the head and it looks in fairly good order here. We will face this off and uh, make sure that's flat because it has a, an aluminium gasket. So it's a, just a straight aluminium gasket. It's not a composite one like on the last Goldie we've done on the BB model. So that's the head. The rocker box itself, uh, we give this a good clean out. The things we check here, obviously we're going to take the spindles out because he's on the eccentrics on a, a proper Goldie. 
because there's the adjustment at the top. But looking at the exhaust rocker, the stand light is starting to wear on the rocker. That needs replacing. If you look there, now if you look at this one here, nice and smooth, the stand light's good. But that one there is badly worn. So we need another rocker here for that shaft inside. So this is where, you know, you just have that closer look. We've also already looked at the piston. It has got some marking. I did find out that at some stage, like it had some contamination in the oil tank and it caused the engine to suffer and it had a replacement conrod by a company. We are looking possibly at having this, I will measure this up later on. We may well go for a slight increase in oversize we'll put a new Wiseco piston here, like we did with Ian's bike, because we're going to have to have a new crankshaft, new conrod, so we might as well do this if we got one the right size, we're not out taking too much out, because it's slightly marked in there. Um, the other thing we need to do is all the bearings in the crankcase, we need to drop these out. Now, it has the outer bearing here, which is the one here, the big bearing here, and behind this metal plate and these tabs here is the outer race. So we'll warm the case, drop those out. And there is a back bearing as well. But we have to make sure we get the better, bear better bearing, uh, quality bearings that are available. They're a little bit hard to find now. Um, Phil said, you know, they're not easy to find those bearings now, but hopefully we can find some for it. So the intention is to replace new bearings with a new crankshaft. The oil pump, we replaced, oh, we replaced on Ian's bike. The thing what we checked, we showed you, we showed you there was wear in the body. This one, it's got the same. Now if you look at that, I don't know if you can see it, I might have to put in the vise and show you. Yeah, that's fine. You can see same issues. That will be an issue. You can get, um, what can happen is get cavitation, air, not getting proper pressure. So yeah, we'll put a new pump in. So this is where it pays to wash things down. Um, I'm just gonna lean over Alex here. The two cams, this is the inlet cam. The lobes are good. I haven't washed these off, I didn't get enough time this morning, but they're in good order. They're okay. We look again for here for the stellite breaking away. And there's no signs of that. This is the intermediate gear. This bush, we need to replace it, it's quite worn. Uh, that was worn on Ian's, we got another bush, got it from Kidderminster, put it in, it just had to ream it out. This is your strainer at the bottom of the engine, we cleaned the gauze out. In the bag here we got the oil pump drive, uh, the worm gear. I tend to put things into bags so that nothing can get lost, you know, and it's much easier making reference to things than you know where things are. Gudgeon pin, we're changing the piston anyway. This was a little bit, bit stepped, it's, it's ridgy. The other thing that people often mention about with the crankcase, and something you need to check, is the mag platform. This is this part at the back of the crankcase where the magneto sits. So if I get the two halves, and if I can just do this on the bench quickly, just put these two together. Make sure I line that up. Okay. So on here, your magneto will sit here, but it will also have, if I can just reach across, it has a spacer normally. So the mag sits down with four little feet that will sit down below the spacer. This, the idea of the spacers is this, changes the mesh on the gear, because you're running the mag gear against the intermediate gear. And it's so important that there's no wear. What we'll do, we'll just check this out. If this alley is starting to wear, which this actually does look like it, we'll just check this out. We'll put a level across here, and we might have to get that built back up and machined off, because it's so important that sits squarely to the drive in there. But, um, all in all, it looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. Magdino, we call this. 
Now what we do with this, we take, we take the dynamo off the top, top strap here, and it comes out, there's a, um, a fibre drive gear in the back here. We take that out, we check that out, and the mag as well, we just make sure we we'll do a, a run with it, sort of, I take the gear off, I can put a flex on here, and we can run that in the vise with a, with a drill to make sure we've got a good spark. If we do have an issue with this, magneto, we might try another component replacement, which is a bright spark external condenser, if we need to. And that would fit inside the magneto rather than having to take the whole um, uh, armature apart and have it put back inside. It's something you might look at. But I think we might be able, it hasn't got a spark, but I think it's just it's been standing. So really that's not too bad. Uh, the, the biggest thing we need to look at besides all this is paint work. So the painting is something we need to sort out. But also we have over here, we have all the, the chrome wear, most of it here anyway. So we have the rear mud guard, front mud guard, the rear stays, chain guard, we've got a new one anyway. But as we can see here, we've got quite a lot of, see the chrome where it's flaking? I can lift it off there. So, yeah, I don't think they're genuine because I think the chrome would have been better in the day. I think these are replacement parts. So we need to find out, really, the cost of chromium against the cost of replacement. Because the mud guards underneath, this front one doesn't look too bad. That's good actually. But the back one, that could have been replaced. This back one is quite, you can see where it's been painted over with silver paint. You can see there's quite a lot of rust. So this, yeah. We need to do this properly because this bike, it deserves to be done properly and the customer is expecting to pay to get it done properly and the, at the end of it, we have a nice bike to ride, won't he? Uh, the wheels themselves, the alloy, alloy rims look okay. We need to drop a tyre off later on, but the hubs need to be done and these ones need a good clean up. It might be a case of obviously stripping up these spokes that's something we won't do. We'll farm it out to a company uh, and let them have a go at those for us. So there's quite a bit of work to do. We'll try and get bits in place, uh, things in place fairly quickly on this job and keep it moving. So this is the tank off the uh, DBD34. As you can see, it's got quite a lot of rust. And if I turn it upside down, you can see underneath here, so some repair work done, some plastic padding. Paint is lifting away at the back, there's a lot of rust. Also, we've got rust inside the tank. You can see here. So this, again, would be a good replacement with one of the Indian tanks that we fitted onto previous bikes that we've done here, which really would make more sense. 